Bonjour everyone, Pentof here today for a new video in which we are going to talk about the 8.5 update and most specifically what it's going to change for the Pershing, the tank you're seeing right there, the tier 8 Tech Tree American medium tank. For those of you not aware of it, the 8.5 update is bringing tons of changing buffs and nerfs on both premiums and regular Tech Tree tanks that we see every day on the battlefield. And it's more than a welcome change because it's probably going to change the whole meta of the game, making the tech trees a little bit more relevant. But with it comes some buffs that are really good, in my opinion, especially the one on the Pershing. But that, I think, Wargaming missed the point. Basically, when you take a look at the Pershing, you see that the only buff it receives is about its gun, because it goes from 7 seconds of reload to 5.75, which is mechanically increasing its dpm and its dpm is going to go from 1.9 to 2.4k which is nearly a 500 difference which is yeah quite impressive but i think it's still not going to make the pershing relevant anymore and i'm going to try to develop those or this idea in three different points so let's not lose too much time and jump directly into it in order for me to explain the first point i need to remove the camera to be able to compare tanks on bleedstar.com here you see that we took a scale of pretty much every single tech tree tank we have in the game medium at tier 8 and we put the M26 Pershing, the tank we're talking about, as the first sample. And you see that on the firepower section this tank is probably one of the weakest, sitting only at 2.2k DPM with a bad penetration over the others that have either a better penetration or a better DPM. And it's truly good that Wargaming is finally doing something about the Pershing, trying to make it relevant by increasing its power wheel. But we have something that maybe Wargaming didn't see or don't care about, and this is the mobility. Because on the mobility, you see that it seems like you have one of the greatest engine power, but compared to all of these other tanks, if we put aside the T26 E4 Super Pershing, you see that it will be one of the lowest simply because of its power to ton ratio. And the problem with this power to weight ratio is that, yeah, Yes, you are going at 48 km per hour and you will get to that speed, but to get it, you will probably take 10, 15 or 20 seconds, which makes you kind of sluggish. And the problem with the sluggish tank and especially the Pershing is that it's a tank that is supposed to take shots. Let me explain briefly what I mean. Pretty much, when you take a look at the M48 pattern, the tier 10 of the branch, you see that it's a tank that is made for all down. You're supposed to bounce shots, etc. And the Pershing is not an exception to the rule. But unfortunately, as you are sluggish, you will kind of struggle to get into position to be able to fight off your opponents being all down. Because usually the all down positions are on the middle of the map where you need a lot of mobility to be able to access to it. So basically, when you take a look at the rest of the tank, you are still not necessarily going to bounce a lot, especially when it comes to tank destroyers. But as long as you're fighting either tier 7 or tier 8 with stock gun or tier 8 not using gold shells such as a nice 3 or things like that, you still have a chance to bounce. But in order to bounce, you need to access to that position. And in order to access to that position, you need a good mobility. The second thing that makes me believe that the Pershing will still not be relevant in the upcoming update is its purpose. Its sole purpose is to climb up to the M48 pattern. But the problem is, nowadays, nobody wants to play the M48 pattern. If you're a regular to tier 10 you will see that a lot of people are using the russian premiums the the regular russian tanks maybe the americans etc but when it comes to this tank specifically you don't see it that often not because it's bad but simply because people forgot about it and they are same tanks of the same tier that are doing the exact same thing but in a better way because i want to remind you that the m48 pattern can be penetrated on the turret chicks whereas if you take a look at the e50m or even at a t62a you will see that yeah those tanks are actually capable of doing much more than the m48 pattern even if it means sacrificing maybe one or two degrees of gun depression now for the last part we need to talk about the playstyle because the pershing is definitely not a tank that is made for new players you need to be experimented in order to become good with it and this is one of the main problems with the Pershing. Usually when people want to get the M48 pattern when they start the game, it's obviously because either they find it cool or they're thinking, wow, that's a USA tank, a USA are good at making tanks, so we're gonna go for this one out of nowhere. And they just, without knowing anything about the game, rush into that line. And when they encounter the Pershing, they see that, ah, yeah, that's quite hard to get what we want with this tank. Because 
Even if this tank is average in everything, it doesn't perform excellently in only one field. And this is what makes those tanks interesting. Why do you keep playing, for example, a Chimera? Because first it's a premium, but putting the premium aspect aside, because that tank has something it's specifically good at, inflicting damage because of its high alpha damage. And this is how you decide either a tank is good or not, because you need to have a combination between a fun Thing to drive around but also something that can stand on the battlefield and the first thing even if it stands on the battlefield it's literally nowhere near a chimera it's just a regular tank that doesn't have its own personality its own character and all you're gonna do is maybe grinding it and poof you are gonna leave it to dust and probably sell it in order to buy the upcoming one which is the exact same, not relevant enough, the M46 pattern, if I'm not mistaken. This is the name of the tier 9. See, I don't even remember the name of the tier 9, and I play this game pretty much every day, just because those tanks are not relevant to me. And I think this is the main problem of old tanks nowadays. Back in the days, it was not necessarily a problem because everybody was grinding and the game was new. But now that those tanks are commonly known among the community, when you are a newbie and you ask someone, is the M48 pattern relevant and if is the line good, most of the people will tell you, nah, don't bother, just go for the T62A because the whole line is better. And in the end, you will have much more fun using the tier 10. So the combination of all these factors are making me believe that the Pershing will not be relevant and no matter what Wargaming does, except if obviously they make it completely broken, I don't feel like this tank will be more played in the upcoming update because every single player that already has the M48 pattern, and trust me it represents a lot of players, they are not gonna bother buying it back simply to play it a little bit, knowing that at this tier, as a premium or a collectible, collectible sorry, you have way better tanks. Maybe I'm wrong, and I truly hope so, because the Pershing is actually one of the tanks that I was looking forward for Wargaming to actually buff, but getting only that gun buff, maybe it's not enough, and we'll have to wait to see. Tell me in the comments what do you think about this buff, do you think it's enough or not, and personally, I'm going to see you soon, probably this afternoon, to talk about the upcoming Battle Pass tank. See ya.